If you watch my previous videos, I talk a lot about barrel whiplash and um, the ammo not being very consistent. Well, if you're really serious about making your barrels more consistent, you should consider adding a barrel tuner. And today we're just going to talk about the math behind the barrel tuner and how to set it. Toward the end, I'll show you some equation on how to set the Harrell barrel tuner. But before that, we're just going to go through some detail of what a standing wave is and, and uh, nodes and anti-nodes inside your barrel. Well, what is a standing wave? Standing wave exists when there's a lot of reflection at the interface of a median. So in this case, the median is the barrel. Uh, one end of the barrel is fixed, the other end is open. So the open end is free to move uh, up and down. The other end is the node. The node is the fixed end. All right. When there's a reflection, it creates a standing wave. And within a standing wave, where the standing wave is fixed, we call that the node. And where the standing wave varies, it goes up and down, we call that those the anti-nodes. If you have a barrel of length LA, we call that the acoustic length, and you only have one node, then the anti-node exists on the opposite end of the barrel, which is the floating end of the barrel. In which case, if you have one node, then there's only a quarter wavelength that fits in that barrel. Okay, if you have two nodes inside your barrel, then what you have is one, two, three, three quarters of a wavelength that fits in that barrel. And if you have three nodes, then you have one, two, three, four, five quarter of a wavelength that fits in that barrel. And if you have four nodes, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarter of a wavelength. In general, if there is two nodes, there's actually half a wavelength or two quarter of a wavelength, okay? In general, the acoustic length is equal to lambda n divided by 4 multiplied by 2n subtract 1, where n is the number of nodes in your barrel. Now we can solve for the wavelength inside the barrel for any number of nodes in the barrel from equation 1. So solving for equation 1 for lambda n, we have 4 equals to 4 LA divided by 2N subtract 1, okay? So for the first harmonic, lambda 1, if you put N equals to 1, then it is equal to 4LA, okay? We can also solve for the frequency inside the barrel for any number of nodes in the barrel. So in general, F of N is equal to the velocity the speed of sound divided by the wavelength of that particular number of nodes in your barrel. And since we know lambda n over here in equation 2, we can substitute lambda n from equation 2 and we get this equation. Okay. Also notice that the fundamental frequency f1 is equal to v or the uh, speed of sound divided by 4LA. So we can actually take this term and substitute it here. And then we come up with an equation of F of N in terms of F1 or the harmonics, right? The first, the fundamental uh, frequency. So for a one closed N and one open N, if you plug in N, right, for one node, two nodes, three nodes, and four nodes, etc etc you can see a, a pattern where only odd nodes exist in this pipe where you know there's only one closed end and one open end right so there's only odd harmonics that exist in this barrel now imagine you just added a barrel tuner to the end of your barrel here um, what we want to do is we actually want to add we want an anti-node at the end of the uh, barrel tuner, then the node would then exist at the crown of the barrel here, okay? So in the first situation, 
where you have two nodes, okay, the first node will be located at the breech of the barrel, and the second node will be at the crown of the barrel. And then you would have an anti-node at the end of the barrel tuner, okay? And if you had three nodes, all right, you want the node to actually be located at the crown of the barrel here, right? So then if you do, if you have a node there, then you would have an anti-node at the end of the barrel here. So we're just going to solve for the number of wavelengths that exists in this case um, within the barrel length instead of the entire length, okay? So solving for two nodes, we can see the length LB or the, 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 the length of the barrel there is two quarter wavelength that exists in here, okay? So you have lambda two, lambda of two divided by four, that's the quarter wavelength, and there's two of them. Now, you, if you have three nodes, okay, then you have one, two, three, four. Then you would have four quarter wavelength within that barrel. If you have four nodes, then you would have one, two, three, four, five, six quarter wavelength, all right? So generalize that, you would have uh, the length of the barrel equals to lambda n divided by four times two n subtract two. And that's the sequence, two, four, six, all right? Where n is the number of node within the barrel, all right? We start with n equals to two, all right? So if you take two times two, that's four, subtract two, then that's two. That will get you this equation, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now if you solve for the wavelength in terms of the barrel length, then you get this. When you add the barrel tuner, the uh, acoustic wave actually travel from the end of the barrel all the way down to the barrel uh, crown that's LB, all right? And then it goes down and then across. Well, we have to account for that extra length that the shock wave travels, all right? This, this N here. And this N is what we call the N correction. So the actual acoustic length is equal to the length of the barrel, LB, plus the N correction, which is that extra path that the wave has to travel when it exits the crown of the barrel down to the barrel tuner. All right, that's the end correction, plus the tuner length, which is across. Again, the end correction is equal to the inner diameter, subtract the bore diameter, divide by two. We also know from equation one up above that the acoustic length, because we want an anti-node at the end, right? The acoustic length is equal to lambda n divided by four times two n subtract one, right? So we knew that from equation one. Uh, where are we right now? Okay, so that's where we're here, right? So LA equals to the acoustic length is equal to lambda n divided by 4 multiplied by 2n subtract 1. So then if we substitute um, uh, lambda n from equation 4 into equation 1, where is equation 4? Equation 4 is over here. So equation 4 um, gives you the, uh, uh, the wavelength in terms of the, the barrel length, okay? So you take equation 4, and substitute that into uh, equation one, then what you get is the acoustic length is equal to LB, is the barrel length, divided by 2N subtract two, multiplied by 2N subtract one, okay? So now that we have the um, acoustic length, we know the physical length is actually uh, equal to the barrel length plus the tuner length, right? So that equates to um, the acoustic length subtract the end correction, right? 
So you solve for that because we know the physical length is just just LB here plus LT. So then the physical length is equal to the acoustic length subtract the end correction. Okay. So plugging in all the equations, um, we know LA, right? So we can substitute LA from uh, equation 10 into there. And then we subtract the end correction. And the end correction is, again, the um, inner diameter of the barrel tuner. Subtract the bore diameter divided by 2. So that's, it. that's that equation. Okay. Um, so that gives you the physical length. All right. That's the length of the barrel plus the tuner length that you want to dial in to tune your barrel. So that's what you want, but you know, um, how do you set that on your tuner? Uh, so we know the tuner length is equal to the physical length, subtract the length of the barrel, right? So we know the physical length already from equation 12, we plug that thing in, and we also know the length of the barrel, right? So then solving for that, simplifying everything, then we come down to equation 13, which gives you the tuner length in terms of the barrel length, right? And the number of nodes that exists in that barrel and the inner diameter of the barrel uh, tuner subtract the bore diameter divided by two. So note that the, the hero tuner length is actually 2.425 inches at zero mil setting, right? So that's the minimum setting on your uh, Harrell tuner. It's, uh, you know, when you set it to zero mil, is actually, the tuner length is actually 2.425 inches. So if the tuner length, all right, is greater than 2.425 inches, then how you set the Harrell tuner is just the tuner length subtract 2.425, all right? So you dot that in, and that's what you want to set your tuner to. Now, in case the tuner length here is less than 2.425, then what you want to do is add a multiple of a half wave length for that particular number of nodes in your barrel, all right? Uh, until the total is greater than or equal to 2.425, right? So then the new uh, Harrell tuner setting would be the, the, tu uh, the tuner length plus multiple of half a wavelength, all right? Subtract 2.425. So that's it. Uh, let's see, some terminology here. LA is the acoustic length. Um, PL is the physical length. ID is the inner diameter of the barrel tuner. Um, in this case, for the Harrell tuner, is the inner diameter is 0 0.63 inches. And the bore diameter, what I use for my rifle is, um, for the 22LR is 0.222 inch, right? Um, for the uh, barrel length, I actually, um, is, is the addition of the barrel length plus the head space, all right, subtract the casing thickness. If you want to be extremely accurate, uh, that's what you would do. You would add the head space and subtract the, the ammo casing thickness. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just use the barrel length um, as is, but I just wanted to, to be as accurate as I can. Uh, so I added the the head space and the ammo casing. Uh, what else? N is equal to the number of nodes that exists inside the barrel. Okay, so that's how you set the Harrell tuner. So good luck.